Battle of Watling Street. It occurred probably in the year 61 AD. The most important thing you need to know about all of this is the Iceni did not have a written language. And so the problem with that is the only information we get about this battle is from the Romans, because the <coughs> Romans wrote about it. And anything we know about the, the battlefield, everything we know about the timing and location comes from the Romans. And so when we only have information from one side, there's a chance that it may be biased. And so a lot of this is guesswork. And even archaeologists are not 100% sure exactly where this happened. <coughs> All right. So what we do know is in the year 43 AD, the Romans reinvaded Britain. Now, uh, Caesar had done this previously, but this invasion is going to stick. And so they're going to stay around. And what's going to happen is the, the, the Britons, various tribes, are going to ally themselves eventually with Rome out of necessity. And one of those tribes, the Iceni, uh, has a, a king, and this king is going to die. When he died, he basically willed his empire, his tribe, and his lands to Nero, who was the emperor of Rome. He also gave it to his wife and surviving daughters. So it was like a dual will. Well, what the Romans decided to do is they're like, well, we don't care about this, this man's wife and daughters. We're going to take his lands. And so they acted as if they had captured the Iceni's territory and just took it. And when uh, the king's wife, her name was Boudicca, when she said, no, that's not something that you could do, that's illegal, <clears throat> the Romans abused her horribly. They ripped her clothes off, they flogged her, and then they took her daughters out, and the men, a lot of them, raped them. And this was horrific. We have an idea that uh, the youngest of the daughters was 13 at the time, so this is horrifically disgusting. And then the Romans left. What's going to happen is Boudicca is going to be obviously incensed, as any of us would be. This is, a, this is horrific. And so she is going to start telling not only her tribe about this, but the neighboring people. <coughs> and what the Romans didn't understand is back then with the Celtic people, women were highly regarded. A woman could be a warrior. A woman could be a leader. And so she became a leader, not just of the Iceni, but also of neighboring tribes. And she was able to create, right away, a substantially large army. And they decided, you defile <coughs> us and our queen and her daughters, and we're going to kick you, Rome, out of Britain. And that's what they're going to start to do. And what's crazy about it is the, the difference between the Romans and the, uh, and, and the Celtic warriors. The Romans, and we've already talked about the Romans, but they used drill and formation and similar weapons, uh, and primarily the pillow, which is a javelin, and the shield, and the gladius, which is a short stabbing sword, and they marched in formation. The Celts preferred uh, a more individual style of battle. They would choose an enemy, they'd taunt an enemy, and then they would prove their power by single combat defeating somebody. The Celts often, and we talked about this, went into battle without a lot of armor. They did have a shield. They used either a spear or a longer sword. Sometimes they'd have uh, axes. Um, but they were used to being slightly separated from other people so they could swing larger weapons. And what's going to happen is the army of the, of the Iceni is going to sweep across Britain. And when the uh, Ninth Legion, one legion decided, you know, we're going to go and we're going to stop them. There's 6,000 of us. We're Romans. Who can stop us? Well, they came across this massive army of Iceni, led by Boudicca, and Boudicca completely destroyed them to the point where 
the uh, Ninth Legion basically ceased to exist. They ran, and their, uh, basically most of their officers that survived ended up uh, in Gaul uh, to, uh, to escape, uh, which is basically present-day France. So what's going to happen is you're going to see Boudicca sweeping through Britain, heading east and then eventually northward, and she starts to take city after city, and her army is massive. We don't know 100% how big it was, but it, by this point, it's in the hundreds of thousands. Yeah. Would they take prisoners, or would they like just execute them? One, the, one of the best parts of the story is when they took uh, Londinium, which is present-day London, uh, they, they came in, and we're kind of getting ahead of the story, but they went in, and they put everyone to the sword. They figured, if you're a Roman, we're going to kill you. If you're a Briton and you've been living under the Romans, you're allied with the Romans, we're going to put you to the sword. And so they brutally tortured people. And uh, initially, within the first really few months of this uh, rebellion, you're going to see the deaths of probably about 80,000 people. This is substantial. This was this was a real live loss for the Romans. Yeah. So would they kill just like the Roman soldiers or also like the no. civilians? Civilians. Yeah. I'm not advocating that. But yeah, that's really what happened in multiple cities. And what's going to happen is after the defeat of the Ninth Legion, the governor of Britain, a guy named Suetonius Paulinus, is going to realize, wow, we actually have to do something about this. This is, this is a big deal. This is real. And he's going to have to take his 14th legion, and he's going to have to march them to meet this massive Celtic army. He's got to meet this army of Boudicca, and there's really no way that he can meet them face to face because there's just too many of them and not enough of him. And Initially, he's going to go to Londinium, and he's like, okay, I'll use this as a base, and then I can bring in reinforcements. But the problem is the reinforcements couldn't come quick enough. Boudicca's army arrived, and that was when the uh, 14th Legion left Londinium, and they left the people of Londinium to be sacked by Boudicca's forces. This was a horrific loss to the Romans. Suetonius Paulinus was no dummy, and so he is going to basically strategically retreat so he can build up his forces. He sent out word to other Roman commanders, uh, particularly he talked to um, the, uh, the Second Legion under a guy named Posthumus and asked for aid, and Posthumus said no. He's like, this, this army is way too big. We saw what happened with the Ninth Legion. We're not going to let this happen to us. Uh, Suetonius, if you want to do this yourself and you want to die, fantastic. We're not going to join you. And so it's going to be Paulinus alone and, and the 14th Legion, and he's going to pick up any Roman he can along his uh, line of march. Now, he's advancing up, or, or he's using the Watling Road because that is the, the road that goes north and south in Britain, and it was a Roman road, so it was easy to, to, to move and maneuver. So he can move quickly, and he gets himself into a position where he can uh, basically choose the battlefield. And he's going to choose this battlefield right here. Um, what happens then is he ends up having only about 10,000 men. And he's going to back them into an area where it looks as if he's going to be uh, trapped. There are low hills here, trees all around. It's kind of a funnel, but he has no escape. And what's going to happen is he knows that the Iceni are going to go up Watling Street and turn and face him. And what he's hoping is that this situation will protect him from being flanked or from being attacked from the rear, but also, because it moves in like a funnel, what does what advantage does that give to the Romans? Yeah. In all attack numbers. Yeah. The huge, overwhelming numerical superiority of the Iceni 
cannot all attack the Romans at once. What else do you know about their weapons versus their weapons? Oh, please. They're used, they're bigger swinging, so it's harder. To yes! Because it's a smaller area. It's a smaller area. They need more space to swing their weapons, and all the Romans have to do with their shields is move the shield a little bit, go down, thrust up with the gladius. And they're going against the unarmored, soft, creamy, nuggety inside of a Iceni warrior. They're not armored. And this is going to be a huge factor. What happens is this. Boudicca puts herself in the, in the front of maybe 230,000 warriors. And they love her, and they are flush with victory. They've been destroying every Roman army they've been coming up against. They're, they can't lose. They know this. They put their chariots out front. People stopped using chariots well before this. But the, 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 the Iceni still like them. And chariots are pretty darn cool, and they can be effective on the battlefield. The Romans have their cavalry on the wings here, and Suetonius is in the back. Boudicca is in the front, and she extols her troops. She's yelling to them. She's firing them up. They want to move in. Behind them is a huge wagon train full of thousands of children and wives and onlookers who want to see the battle and all of their supplies. And they're blocking this way here. Basically, they think they're going to block the Romans in. The Romans can't escape. They're done. And if the Romans can be defeated here, the Romans are done. Nero knows this. He already thinks that Britain isn't worth it. So if these guys defeat these guys, these guys have to leave Britain. So this is a real important battle. Well, what's going to happen is uh, Suetonius is going to say to his soldiers, despise the savage barbarians. The women outnumber the men. He said, those aren't men out there. It's mostly women. So you should be able to feed them easily. And so he's playing on the macho feeling of these guys. And it's like, yeah, those are just girls out there. I think we can beat them. And Boudicca, now we're going from the words of Tacitus, who is a Roman, who is writing 50 years after the battle. But he says that Boudicca exclaimed the following. She said, nothing is sacred to the Romans. All are violated. The old endure the scourge, and the virgins are deflowered. She talked about how horrible the Romans were to the people of Britain, and how they must band together. And she says, I'm not doing this for me. I'm doing this for you. And they were fired up and ready to go. And so what's going to happen is, essentially, the Romans have to hold. They can't give up ground because there's no ground to give. If they break their formations, what's going to happen? If the Romans break formation, what's going to happen? What do you think? What's that? It, it, yes, and they'll, they'll be able to break in between the shield walls, and, and it's going to be a massacre. So all the Romans have to do, remember their, their training, remain disciplined, and just fight. What do these guys have to do? What do you think? Well, what's that? Just stay there. You know what? If they just sat there, it is possible that they could have starved them out. That's really tough to do. When you really, you, you came for a fight, and so it's really tough, and you think you're going to win. Had they sat there, it might have possibly been to their advantage. But they thought they couldn't lose. But boy, is that a smart move. Just kind of lay siege to them. Surround them and sit there. It's your territory. You've got the food. That might have been a brilliant plan. Right? What's going to happen is this. Boudicca is going to launch her troops forward. According to chroniclers, she was in the thick of the battle. Like she charged forward with her daughters attached to the, uh, to the chariot with her. She's screaming, yelling. She runs up to the front. Suetonius hangs out in the back giving orders. And the first waves of the Iceni move forward. And like you guys expected, when they moved forward, they started to get smooshed together, 
and small groups of them ended up pushed in. So we'll just make a big old group here. And we'll pretend they're gone because they've moved forward. All right? You've got this group of people like this that are pressing forward. But like you guys said, only a few can come into contact at any given time. And the Iceni are used to individual combat. They're charging forward. They're pressing forward to try to get to the Romans to kill them. And the Romans, in an organized, almost mechanical, automaton-like fashion, are standing with their shields and waiting for them to get about 40 yards away. And that's when they launched the first of their pilla, or their javelins. And what this did to the, to the Iceni, they're running with wooden shields. And a pilla is an iron and wooden spear. It's meant to hit a target and stick. It's got a barb on it. If it hits a person, it sticks in them. And that's tough to fight with a big spear sticking out of you. But another thing that it does is it gets stuck in your shield. And you can't maneuver your shield. You can't use it anymore. So what would happen is if you blocked a pilla, it's in your shield and stuck and you can't maneuver anymore. So you drop your shield and you charge forward with your sword or your spear. So now you don't have anything to defend yourself with. So even if the Roman pilla missed their target, if they hit the shield, now their second shot is going to be easier to hit. See what I'm saying? So they usually carry usually two pilla. So you've got the Romans with their shields launching one, then grabbing their next one and launching the next. And that's really going to disrupt these guys in the front that are charging forward. Either they're shieldless or they're injured. And the Romans are just going to stand their ground. Now, sometimes what they'll do is they'll stand their ground and slowly march forward because that gives them a sense of control. And so uh, Suetonius may have had his soldiers do that, a slow forward movement while you're stabbing at the enemy because sometimes they did that. But what is going to happen is these guys are going to charge up, they're going to swing, they're, they're huge weapons, they're going to get injured and tired. These guys can't even get in the battle. The Romans were so well drilled, the guy in the front would fight for about six minutes, and then on orders with a trumpet or from the centurion. It depends on, on who they were listening to, because trumpets could be used to send his orders to the entire group. The men would shift. And the guy in the front would sidestep and drop back. And the next guy would move in, exactly the same weapons, same training, and would keep fighting. And he, this Roman is fighting a tired Iceni. He's fresh. The guy in the back has, if you've got eight ranks, has about a 40-minute rest sitting in the back going, okay, okay, in about 40 minutes I'm going up, halfway through, in about 20 minutes. And then he's rested, and he can fight. This is how the Romans fought. It was brilliant. It really was. What's going to happen at this point, Boudicca can't give any orders to her men. They can't hear her. He can give all the orders he wants. They're using trumpets. And they have centurions in charge of anywhere between 60 and 80 men. So officers spread throughout the ranks. That's when Suetonius gives a very important order. He tells his men, and he uses his reserves, he has them form up into wedges. Pointy, triangular wedges. Let me show you. Oops, wrong color. He has them form almost like triangles. And he brings up his reserves, and they start to move forward. Now, what this does is these guys are going to come into contact first, and it's going to kind of disrupt the Iceni. These guys are moving forward, shields, shields, together, stabbing, and it's going to completely throw these guys off. They can't deal with this. They can't get to the Romans to hurt them. Then Suetonius calls in his cavalry. And they sweep around the edges, and they start attacking the flanks. This is where the battle 
shifts. Because these guys don't know what to do. They can't win. They feel as if they're being surrounded, even though they're being surrounded by a much smaller group of people. There aren't that many Romans. But they're not hurting the Romans. They're fighting fresh guys every six minutes or so. And what happens is very quickly there's going to be kind of a, a fight or flight mentality. And for Boudicca, she sees this happening and there's nothing she can do about it. Even if she rushes into the battle, who knows what's going to happen. But what we do know happens is these guys, the Iceni, broke. And they, they ran. And they ran this way. What's the problem? Thank you. What's the problem? Oh, please. They're going to run in to their families and into the baggage train. And because they're running, they're no longer organized. They're running for their lives. The Romans pursue them, and when they hit the wagon train, they can't get through. These become choke points. The choke points become areas of massacre. The Romans are so incensed at this point that they kill everything. They kill the pack animals, women, children, obviously the soldiers. They kill everything. Boudicca runs off of the battlefield. The Romans win the Battle of Watling Street. They shouldn't have. According to Rome, they lost 400 men in this battle. According to the Romans, again, we've only got their uh, viewpoint, according to the Romans, the Iceni and the Britons lost 80,000 on this battlefield. Now, that's probably a little too high, but we know it was an unbelievable slaughter. The end result of this is Suetonius is the winner. Boudicca, knowing that she's going to be uh, captured, eventually probably tortured very publicly, probably brought to Rome. Uh, she decides that it's probably better to commit suicide, according to some sources. We don't know what happened to her daughters. Uh, we do know that Rome is going to remain in Britain for the next 400 years because they won this battle. I will tell you, though, that Nero uh, pulled him out of Rome as governor, fearing that... Uh, he would incite more uh, uprisings, and they sent in a, a nicer uh, Roman governor to kind of placate uh, the Britons. Uh, the last thing you should know is that Boudicca herself uh, became a symbol of resistance, a symbol, a heroine of Great Britain, uh, deservedly so. Uh, she stood up to the might of Rome and, uh, and was extremely successful until just this battle, but also she became a symbol of resistance to a superpower, not unlike Arminius and uh, Vercingetorix had uh, previously. So, pretty big deal. She was a, a superhero in her time. Any questions? Anything you'd, you'd like to know more about with this? She's so awesome. She just got outgeneraled. But to be able, can you imagine anyone controlling an army of 230,000 people? It was a woman back then, the year 60 or 61 AD. That's so cool that a woman was able to do that. It just is. Right? Thank you, guys. You can clap. <laughs> it makes you feel better when you guys do that. I, I won't add that part to the end of it because it would be really silly. But.